Greetings from RCCG New Covenant Parish in Oklahoma City. This is the Open Heavens for May 14th, 2019. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the title for today is he makes and unmakes kings. He makes and unmakes kings. And the memory verse is in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, which says, And had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion, forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And the Bible reading is in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to verse 13. 1 Samuel 16, verse 1 to to verse 13, which reads, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your own with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then they consecrated JC and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that they looked at Elia and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man sees, looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. And Samuel said to Jesse, now all the young men here, then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes, and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So we can see from this story, the Lord makes kings and he makes kings. At a point in time, he made Saul the king. But due to his disobedience, the Lord made him king and made David the king. I'm talking about kingship. If you belong to God through Jesus Christ, the good news and the sure thing and the confirmation we have for you today is that you are a king. If you belong to God through Jesus Christ, 
you are for sure a king. And the truth is that in the spirit man, spirit realm, you are royalty. And you need to be conscious of this great privilege. Irrespective of your second circumstance, irrespective of your current circumstance, or your situation, whatever it might be, you have to realize that so long you belong to Jesus Christ, you are indeed royalty and you are a king. And we know that because of the fall of man, we lost that position. But thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ, who came and Christ restored us to the rightful position God created for us to occupy. And talking about this topic again, it makes our mixed king. As the original kingmaker, Jesus alone has the power to make and unmake kings. And that's why, like I, we just talked about the story of Saul, he deposed him, which means he unmade him as king. Why? Because of his careless disobedience. So that's something we need to watch out for. We, if we don't want to lose our royalty in him, just like David lost it because of his careless disobedience, we need to be careful and obey the Lord, which we will still talk about more. And he made David king in his place. Saul was removed and David became king. Another thing for us to notice here is that this um, transfer of kingship from Saul to David being replaced, the replacement that happened, it actually happened in the spirit, man, spirit realm before it even manifested in the physical. And that is why even though Saul has lost his crown, he still sat on the throne physically, but he has lost it spiritually. And even though David was already anointed king, spiritually, physically, he was still dwelling in caves and taking care of sheep. But that's to prove to you that so long it's been done in the spiritual, it will eventually manifest in the physical. We have established the fact that we are kings. And as we are kings, we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing to protect our thrones and our crowns? So that we do not lose our status like Adam and King Saul did. What should we do so that we maintain our kingship? So that we don't lose our kingship? We're taking a leave from what happened to Saul. We know that absolute obedience to the word of God is what we must continuously do in order for us to retain and to maintain our kingship. And furthermore, our allegiance to Jesus Christ must be unwavering. If we want to maintain that kingship, our allegiance to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords must never waver. It must stand sure and strong all the time. We are being asked today, if you want to maintain our kingship, we will be stable in the Lord. Are you unstable in your work with God? Is your heart still reserved? Is part of your heart still reserved for part of the world? If the answer to any of this is yes, then we are the path of losing our kingship, which we should not do. So let's make sure we are stable and our heart is totally sold out for the master with no part in it reserved for the world. And another thing we need to know, even just like it happened to Saul, was that dominion and power can be stolen from a king. Even in the case of David, he lost his throne for a while due to his son Absalom when he stole the house of his subjects. And he, didn't re he had to retain that throne with a fight. So the teaching for today again is that, yes, in the case of Absalom and David, he lost his throne for a while, but he fought for it back. What represents the Absalom in your life, in my life, that will make us lose our kingship? We must fight to a standstill until we regain that kingship. If we have lost it due to any 
any form of sin or iniquity, we must retain it, we must regain it, and fight to a standstill until we get it back. So anything that represents sin in our lives, we must fight it to a standstill so that we don't lose our kingship. Stand your ground in Christ and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The prayer point is that, Father, help me to continually reign on your behalf on earth until I see you in glory. Father, Lord God Almighty, we pray. Help us, O God, to continually reign on your behalf right here on earth until we see you in glory in the mighty name of Jesus, O God. We shall not lose our kingship, O God, even here on earth, O God. Father, we shall reign for you, we shall reign with you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O God. And anything that wants to rob us of our kingship, O God, Father, take away from our lives, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for watching, and see you tomorrow by God's grace.